Now that looks like a transformer. Hi guys, Jay Smith here, down at Berry Golf Range in Suffolk. Bit of a misty day, but still will not stop us from testing because it's not raining, because my cameras aren't waterproof. So, if you haven't seen my Callaway Rogue Standard Driver video, I'll put the little card up top here, you can click on that if you haven't seen that one first. Now, it's the Sub-Zero time. So, this Sub-Zero is slightly different to the normal Rogue driver, in the fact that it's got two little ports rather than the standard just one, which is in the back of the normal Rogue, where you can now swap CG, center of gravity. You've got a two gram and a 14 gram weight in the bottom of which you can then swap around. Now, because you've got all that with the design, they've tried to shift the CG a little bit further forward. Then you've got these two ports as well, which you can really then shift all the weight then even more forward if you want to try and control your spin. Now, when it comes to the rest of the tech, so jailbreak, it remains. Yep, we've had jailbreak in the Epic last year, of which is still remaining in the family. So don't think Epic guys that you've bought an Epic that is now defunct, discontinued and no longer. It is still within the family of drivers. This is just another option when you get tested. But the jailbreak has been slightly changed. So it's now more, the bars are more like hourglass figures, shapes. So it strips a bit of weight, yet still maintaining the structural integrity of keeping the crown and the sole fused together. When it comes to this, the X, the X face with variable face thickness. Ugh. So basically when it comes to the face, um, yeah, in the middle it is as springy as it can ever be. Most manufacturers now have obviously got to a limit as to what they can do with their faces in the middle. So the effective sweet spot. However, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to make sure that we can, um, when we hit the ball slightly off center, like everyone does, so even pros, even like proper tour pros, they hit off of center sometimes. So with their variable face thickness, they can try and improve ball speeds around the face. Boeing have got involved when it comes to the shaping of this driver face. It's got a bit of a strange curve to it, which they're saying obviously increases um, or better airflow over the head. So obviously what we're saying about the face can only go a certain amount of springiness, coefficient of restitution, blah, blah, blah. Um, what they're trying to do is actually make the mass travel faster. So in this technology is in this as it is the Rogue. Um, still looks like a transformer on the bottom. Um, it's uh, quite a funky design. I actually quite like the look of it. I've had some of the like the trailers that you get for um, uh, Rogue with the. Oh, I'll put, see if I can bang it on the screen there. The the lights, how they've done it, it looks quite good. Um, and then you've got the same loft sleeve that they've had now for a little while. So if you've got your custom fit driver from your Epic, and you want to try out the Rogue, you've got your custom fit. You'll go straight into the head. But right when it. Um, Look down by the ball, when it comes to this triaxle crown, composite carbon crown, these names, um, right, it's carbon. So you're gonna get, it's a carbon composite head, you're gonna get that classic bull noise that you're gonna get from carbon heads. It's just the way the technology works. But using carbon, uh, which is similar to the Epic, which I've done last year, but they've even stripped even more weight off the top of this. Now this is incredible because this is already very, very thin and weighs two thirds of chuff all. Yet they've still managed to strip weight from it and then obviously place it in the back of this driver, back and the bottom. Now, obviously this being a low spinning head driver, sometimes we say the moment of inertia, resistance to twist, forgiveness, whatever you want to call it, suffers because obviously you're pushing the CG, the center of gravity, closer to the face. Now, Callaway, with moving this weight, has now, what they're saying, increased the MOI. So even now it's a low spinning driver, it still reacts as good as a normal um, forgiving club. Now, we'd have to test that. How can you test forgiveness? Great question. Comment below. But, right, let's go and see how it hits. I'm gonna do some shots. Oh, I've got GC2 HMT on the floor. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna hit four because, there we go, get GC2 up. So if I can't get, don't turn GC2 on, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Um, right, I am gonna hit 
four, because what we need to do, these are range balls, remember, so they're not going to react the same as a real ball does. But from the field point of view, and that is the most important thing from this part of the test, is to give you an understanding of how it feels. Now, I wasn't a great fan of the Epic because it was a little bit too dead with that carbon composite construction. But let's see if we can hit the Sub-Zero and see how this one goes. The T's flown. Good shot. That feels lovely. 151 ball speed, 15 degrees of launch, 3,074 spin. It's going to spin more. It's a range ball. 251 carry. But feeling lovely. Now, I... I didn't, as I said, I'm not a great fan of carbon composite heads because I don't like the sound, the, little, the dead noise. I play a titanium base driver head and I quite like the ting, like the, the, quite the loud crack that you get from it. Um, that was carbon-like, but it had a little bit of um, extra acoustics, which I quite like. Now, whether it's because of the transformer bits at the bottom, I don't know, but it has made a difference to the sound mix, which I quite like. Let's go hit another one. Bye bye T. Um, well, we got 152 ball speed, 158 launch is launching well. Uh, 2789 spin, 258 long ball. For, for a range ball, that's a long ball. Because that was spinning down at 2789. So, yeah, I like that. What was, I, what was I swinging at? Let's have a look at the swing. 114, 114 twice so far. Nice and consistent. I like the feel of that. I like the look of it as well. Now, whether it's because obviously I've got the LED lights on the screen and it's really glistening down um, on this glossy black um, crown, but on the back of the crown, you can see the carbon weave. So they've painted it, but they've painted it when it comes to this part, this, it's kind of faded into the, the raw weave behind, and I actually quite like that. I do. Two more to go, and let's get some real data, because I'm eager to see how this thing performs. And he's gone again. That's nice. I like that. 150 miles an hour, 15 degrees of launch. Gone a little bit left, yeah, but 255. I like that. If you haven't seen my epic, epic, um, normal rogue video, the standard Rogue, pop on the channel and have a look, if not I'll try and stick it up there. Um, it feels very, very, very similar, as in, if you were to blind test me, and I was just to look, I couldn't tell the difference. Couldn't tell the difference at all. I like the feel of that. Right, one more. Yeah, that's lovely. 153 ball speed, launch slightly lower. 3150 spin, 253, fraction left, 4.5 yards is nothing. What was I swinging up at that one? Um, 115, oh, one mile now more. Um, right, quickly, shaft. I know some guys are gonna go, what shaft do you have that in? Now, my subscribers should know by now, the people that have watched me for a little while know that I am not shaft sensitive, so, I don't really mind what shaft I have. This is an extra stiff and it's 60 grams. Makes no difference for me whatsoever. I've done a video before where I've like changed shafts and it makes tiny amounts, so it's in so small. So I can have what I want, which is, which is quite handy. So, but an extra stiff anyway. Right, we're gonna go hit this Sub-Zero with my Game Ball Vice Pro to see how premium balls react with this thing. Okay, now I've hit a few shots, now 10 of them. Um, reason I've hit about 10 is because I've run out of space if I go anymore. Um, with my Game Ball Vice Pro, to see how a premium ball works rather than obviously hitting it with a range ball. Now, instantly, I'm not gonna go into a, um, a comparison between the Rogue and the Sub-Zero. I'm gonna do that in another video because it's important that we get like the feelings, the, 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 how it looks, how, how it feels off the face, etc. Um, in this video, and then when it comes to the more data-driven video, I want to do that afterwards. So I don't want to get like drummed down too much in the comparisons between the two. On average, my ball speed is 159. So, and I was swinging at 115 miles an hour on average. I was launching at 15 on average, 
Um, but bearing in mind, I go from 12.2, when I don't quite strike it, so if I look at the strike, so there you go, on my last hit that I hit, 161 miles an hour ball speed, so it's quite quick on the ball speed, but look, 12.2 launch angle, look where I struck it. It was three mil toe, nine mil low. Now with roll and bulge, yeah, you should understand that there's less loft at the bottom of the club because of roll and bulge, yeah, anyway. Um, spinning up, 2158. Now this is where I don't want to get into the comparison video because basically you have the sub because it spins less than the rogue. Does it? Yes it does, but we'll get into reasons why in the, in the other video. Low, um, peak in height of 40.8. So it's still getting up there um, and then descending at 41. So it's descending half okay. So it's depending what ground conditions you got. You can do a situation of wet, it will basically carry and stop where it, within reason where it's carrying. You get that in the summertime and that's bouncing and rolling down the fairway and on average of 284 carry. So I am quite pleasantly su um, surprised and pleased with the Rogue Sub-Zero, I am. Now, my only concern that I've got with the Rogue is my strikes on the Rogue weren't too bad. So if I go over to the strikes, you can see there that they are within and around, what was I averaging? I was averaging four mil toe, one mil low. So I was basically hitting the middle and favoring the toe fractionally. And my spin was down at 1849 on the lowest number. If I start hitting that higher on the face, what are these spin numbers gonna do? Because basically 1800 RPM, 1700, 1800 RPM is like bang on for where I need to get that, like the longest shot I can. Because what did I get? I got one up there at 290 carry and at 159 ball speed. I'm only swinging at 116 miles an hour, say only, but I'm swinging at 116 miles an hour and I have 290 carry. What's going to happen though if I catch it slightly higher on the face and it starts ripping the spin off through gear effects? I'm going to be looking at shots which I'm going to be starting to lose distance because I haven't got enough spin to keep the ball up in the air and start to literally just loop out of the sky. Now that is when you look at something and go, well, do I then go to the other club, the road normal, because I've got like a, a higher spin profile. Yes, I may not get my longest, but then on average, I may not, yeah. So it's worth something, but on this test alone, on this test alone, yes, I would have the sub. I get very, very, I mean, I'm looking at that 10, it's like uh, 284, which is longer than the normal road, but then it's got that potential to be a lot shorter as well. So. Yeah, I'm going to put like the, the club head data up on the screen very, very quickly, Donk, so you can pause the video if you want to have a look at that. Um, and I'll put like the, the strike on there so you can see what happened with strikes and etc. But um, yeah, hope you liked the video. If you did, click that like button below. Um, go on, click. This side here has going to be a subscribe button. If you can click that for me, that allows me to get more equipment like this so I can put more content out there for you. So I can go into more, I mean, I know my videos are slightly different from the point of view of they're more data driven, but it's a, it's a valid point to see how they perform. So yeah, comment below with what you'd like to see me do test-wise, how you'd like me to test something in the future or feedback on this club, and then we'll catch you again soon.